Hey guys, to Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be talking about vacuums. Most of the time, players create a vacuum as a means of gas element control or for preparing a room for a steam turbine. But today, we're going to be talking about the vacuum itself, the properties it holds, and we'll also differentiate between a tile that's a vacuum and a vacuum tile with space exposure. A vacuum, by definition, is a space entirely devoid of any matter, and in Oxygen Not Included, this space is going to be considered a tile, as that is the minimal amount of space any entity can take. When creating a vacuum in an area, it's recommended to have an enclosed space with solid tiles and a liquid lock so that the duplicates can go in and out of the vacuum area and outside of the box without allowing any of the gas to flow in and out. Normally, depending on the type of elements that's inside, you're going to need to remove it via gas pump, liquid pump, mopping, mining, or sweeping debris tiles. That's going to be entirely dependent on what's inside the vacuum. Of course, there is a lot of different methods to do so, and we're going to show you a popular method at the bottom. This is going to be the build deconstruct method where you build out the solid tiles after having a little bit locked in the entrance of it. You can deconstruct the solids and you're going to see that after deconstructing, we're going to have a vacuum space right behind it. This is going to be known as the hollow out method that is going to be very widely used. And of course, depending on the size and shape of the area that you're creating a vacuum in, there's going to be pros and cons to the different methods. Now, duplicates are not bothered when they're inside of a vacuum. There is nothing about a vacuum that bothers them, and they're perfectly safe to go in and run around inside a vacuum. Of course, they will be holding their breath while inside if they're not wearing an Atmo suit. However, without an Atmo suit, they will not break a vacuum by breathing out. Duplicates are only able to breathe out if they're able to breathe in. Because of that, if a duplicate is holding their breath while inside of a vacuum, no gas will be released. However, there are some exceptions. That's going to be if your duplicate has the flatulent trait or if they're wearing a oxygen mask. Due to how the oxygen mask allows the duplicates to breathe oxygen at any point in time, if they happen to breathe in while inside of a vacuum room, they're going to breathe out the carbon dioxide which will rapidly spread inside of the vacuum room. Now since in a vacuum the space is devoid of any matter, that also means it's devoid of any temperature. Don't get this twisted though, as a vacuum does not mean that it's either hot or cold. A vacuum is a lack of either hot or cold, and also is the absence of an element. Anything that goes through a vacuum will come out at the exact same temperature it enters as. That being said though, a vacuum is great for controlling temperature. As you can see right here, we have a hot saltwater geyser that has 95C liquids coming out. The problem with this, if you guys have encountered a hot geyser before, is that the heat would be spreading out radially. And a lot of the times the hot liquid becomes a good source of heat energy if you do need to warm things up. However, if we were to put the liquids in a vacuum, you're going to see that none of the heat actually transfers. That's because a vacuum will not absorb or transfer any of the heat generated between elements and tiles. You could see that as a result, the solid tiles above the saltwater geyser are not heated up at all. This is a great property and mechanism that could be further utilized for other builds and designs as well. Over here in a steam turbine room, we're utilizing the vacuum property so that we could run a heavy watt conductive wire between the steam room where we have our batteries and transformers, connecting so that the steam turbine's energy generated generates and stored in the transformers and batteries. We're able to do this because of the vacuum properties. With the heat overlay, you can see right here that the steam room Although it heats up the joint plate for the heavy watt conductive wire, it's not able to actually transfer any of the heat to the other side. On the top, we have a room that wants to constantly be below 100 degrees Celsius, and below we have a room that wants to constantly be above 125 degrees Celsius. You can see right here the problems occur when trying to run a heavy wire through the walls without having it run outside the liquid locks and causing a mess. You can see right here by utilizing a small vacuum room, we could combine the two joint plates with a wire so that the temperatures are separated. One of the many applications of utilizing the vacuum. Because of how a vacuum affects the heat transfer properties, a lot of the times you want to avoid building any building that generates any amount of heat. This jumbo battery, as you can see right here, has been here since the early days of cycle 10 and generates a little bit of heat onto itself. 
although it's been here for a while, it has gradually increased the temperature of the area via a very minor amount over the course of 900 cycles. Because of how the building is constantly submerged in an ocean of gases that also makes contact with other solids and liquids as well, the heat generated is very marginal. However, once that same building is going to be placed in a vacuum, we're going to see what happens with the heat. Now the battery is starting to uh, heat up itself as it holds the power in joules. As you can see right there, the battery is going to be rapidly increasing. Due to the fact that there's no gases or liquids or solids in the area to absorb the heat, the battery is going to have to put the heat generated onto the building itself, rapidly increasing the temperature of the building, eventually bringing it over the overheat temperature, or if it doesn't have overheat temperature, to the melting point of said building. Of course, this means that anytime you have a building inside of a vacuum, you want to make sure that it doesn't generate heat. Now let's talk about the space exposure block. The space exposure block, as you can see on the tooltip, is a special property on the vacuum. This is only going to be present when you reach the surface of your map and break through the abyssal light. Once you get to the space or the surface of the map, you're going to see your vacuum tiles have the uh, space exposure property. Space exposure allows the vacuum to maintain as a vacuum by consuming all liquids or gases that happen to occupy the tile alongside the vacuum. The space exposure has no limit to how much it can consume, and it's going to be consuming at different rates depending on if it's going to be a liquid or a gas. The liquids and gas are going to be consumed at different rates. You could see that the water is deteriorating a lot faster as it in kilograms while the gas was in grams. Liquids get consumed by the space exposure by 100 kilograms per second or 20 kilograms per tick with 5 ticks in a second. The gases, regardless of the element type, is going to be consumed at 100 grams per second, which each tick taking 20 grams. Of course, the only exception to the space exposure tile are going to be solid tiles. As you can see right here, the solid tiles that we built are not going to be consumed by the space exposure. Not only that, there are a couple ways to remove the space exposure properties as well. Amongst the solids, we have something called background tiles, such as the drywall, temp shift plate, or the pixel pack. While hovering over this setup, you can see that we're in a vacuum, however, there is no space exposure anymore. While hovering back to the vacuum tile above it, there is a space exposure tile on that. So by having a wall of either temp shift plates, drywalls, or pixel packs, you could remove the space exposure property over the tiles that these background tiles occupy. Of course, this means that if you want to remove the space, that's going to be a lot of drywall, temp shift, or pixel packs you're going to have to build. Now to go over the last interaction with the vacuum or space exposure tile, that's going to be either light or radiation. Both light and radiation act similarly when it comes to the vacuum, as normally any gas or any element in the way reduces the amount of radiation that shines through. As you can see, we have a solid block right there reducing the amount of radiation that gets through. Same thing with the light, as the light value is going to be steadily there. The vacuum does not slow it down, however, any other tiles will. Of course, this is same with gases as the higher the gas density, the less light or radiation shines through. However, because of the space exposure of vacuum, it is a lack of element, which means that it has nothing impeding or blocking its way from getting to where it needs to get to. But guys, that has been the vacuum properties explained. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.